Beloved, you are welcome back to another episode of the way of salvation. I believe that you agreed with me in the last episode that because politicians of our day and people like to solve problems to ascribe glory to themselves, that is why they have pushed God's kingdom away. But the Lord Jesus was telling us that if we can invite the kingdom of God into our circumstances, God will come in and solve every spiritual problem we encounter as human beings. Don't forget that I said the kingdoms of the earth are only earthly and physical and don't last forever. But God's kingdom is spiritual and last forever. Human kingdoms who have pushed God's kingdom away are struggling with spiritual issues because you are depending on other human beings to solve the problems in the kingdom. What I mean is that if a state has a president, has a prime minister or a king or a queen, he depends on other human beings to solve the problems of the kingdom. He has to have a finance minister to solve the financial issues. He has to have a health minister to be in charge of health issues and so on and so forth. But in the kingdom of God, where I preach from, God does not need any human being in his kingdom to solve the problems of his kingdom. God doesn't need any finance minister because according to Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 he supplies all our needs. He does it himself. I told you last time he was able to supply breakfast and supper by himself. And God doesn't need any health minister. Today the kingdoms of the earth are struggling because you are depending on a human being who is a health minister. And, and in my kingdom, and in the kingdom of God, God doesn't need one because he himself is the healer. That is why it is important to invite the kingdom of God into your physical kingdom or governance for him to help you out in the spiritual problems you encounter. So Mr. President, Mr. Prime Minister, the king and the queen who may be listening to me, this is the most wise thing to do. Invite the kingdom of God into your physical kingdom and you will see that things will become easy. As he does to his subjects in the spirit, he will do the same thing for you. So that is what I said last time. I am still with the same scripture of last time. So let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Verse 13. Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. The Lord said, And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, for yours is the kingdom. That is what I spoke about last time. Today I'm continuing with the next one. And the power. That's all. And the power. What I mean is that the Lord Jesus was trying to bring unto the minds of all his followers that power belongs to God forever and ever. Hallelujah. Power belongs to God forever and ever. He wants us to understand that in this life we are not here alone. You know why the Lord was trying to bring the word power on our minds? Listen to the explanation God says I should give you. It is because when God created this earth the demons who had rebelled in heaven were already here. They are here with the small power God gave them to terrorize human beings 
and prevent us from seeing that all power belong to God. In fact, demons know this. That is why they try to change into physical or, or, or uh, demonic things that can frighten people, monsters that can frighten you. Because once you see them, you think, hey, they are very powerful. So, because as a result of this, people don't see that all power belongs to God forever. That is why the Lord was telling us in the Lord's prayer that all power belongs to God. That should be on our minds. So in this time of the coronavirus, it is the period that you need to understand that all power, absolute power, belongs to God. What is power? Power is not something that you see something and it vanishes all, the, all of a sudden. That's all demons are trying to frighten human beings with. But God wants to tell his subjects that if you are here on earth, don't let the demonic power frighten you. Because all that they do is just to frighten you. The true and forever power belongs to me, almighty God. That is what the Lord wanted to convey. But it is shocking that some people who profess to be Christians say this. Hey, 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 don't talk about the devil. Don't talk about the devil. Hey, don't talk about the devil. Hey, why? Because if you talk about them, you see them tomorrow. Don't talk about them. Hey, some people say, hey, in fact, the devil is powerful. Oh, he's very powerful. Hey, don't try. Hey, we are Christians, but you know, the demons are very powerful. Such people don't know the God I preach about. I will never teach my children to say demons are powerful. According to what I know, demons are nothing before my God. That is why I am teaching about them on this channel. Once you know more about my God, you will see that all their deeds are just small things before my God. If you talk about power, it belongs to God. So never say that demons are very powerful if you call yourself a Christian. Because let me read this to you in Psalm 62 verse 11. Psalm 62 verse 11. David was speaking here and listen to what David said. He said, God has spoken once in my life and in my dealings with him. Sometimes I heard that God sp speaks once. God has spoken once. And twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God. Hallelujah. God spoke once and twice. I have heard that power belongs to God. What he means is that God can speak one time. But on a numerous occasion, God has power over everything. It means one time he can speak. But for power, you can understand that it goes on and on. His speaking can be once, but his power goes on. There is, you know, there's one thing that baffles me. In this time of the coronavirus, people are saying that, hey, the virus is real. The vi I heard even the pastor say, hey, this is not the time to go to church because the virus is real. What they want to say is that demonic things are going on. My question is this. This is what baffles me. So demonic things are going on. What about the power of God then? Demons have power to put diseases on people. And you believe. What about the power of God? Huh? Where is that one? You see demonic power around. So you don't see God's power. What a shame. It means you don't know the God you are talking about. You don't know him. You see, all power belong to God. He created everything. Before I talk about his creative potency. Listen, when you talk about power, it's the ability to conjure and bring into being things that do not exist to come into existence. And that ability is only with God. Listen, you might say, ah, but I've seen people uh, bring money 
from uh, do magic and, and, and bring money, say things and money comes into me. Listen, all those things are tricks. Somebody also say, oh, but I went to a, a fetish priest, he said some things and I became pregnant and I gave birth to a child. Demons don't have any children. They don't have any babies to give you. If you don't know, I'm telling you, it is a demon that they put in your stomach. If you talk about creative power, I'm talking about creative power. It is only God who created everything. He spoke and everything that was not in existence came into existence. That is what God did in Genesis chapter 1. That in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and God spoke. Everything you see came from his mouth. That means he has power. The demons or Satan, you say they have power. God created all of them. God has power. You see, that's why I am, I am amazed that some pastors who say they are preaching from the spirit of God, but they are still afraid of a virus. This is a shame. Everything you see came from God. I have always said this. If a lion pops up here, you will see what will happen. People will run if you are at home. I've seen a video that a lion broke loose and entered the cities of America. People were running helter-skelter. People were enduring themselves. Cars were knocking each other. Why? Because they have seen a vicious animal. A serious animal that can kill them. People are afraid. I've always said this. That animal you are afraid of came from the words of God. He just spoke and that animal came into existence. Our God has power. You see the elephant. If you hit the, the elephant with a stone, it will not feel it. Why? Because you see that animal has strength and power. Strong. God spoke and the elephant came into being. How can, how can God, listen, in Genesis chapter 1, this is how it was. The whole earth was filled with water. And listen to what, look at what I'm going to do. How can God say this? Let the heavens be separated from the earth. And then, and then it, began, it began like this. And it began to go like this. To the first, second, and the third. Wow! How can it be? It was like this, flat. And God separated the heavens from the earth. Look at how awesome God is. He has power. So that is why I love the word power. And our church and its name operates according to the name. Action power operates according to its name. Action power of faith. In, in our church, I see the power of God every day. There is no demon that can stand in front of me. Why? Because my God who created all of them is very active in me. That is why I'm preaching like this at this time of the coronavirus. God has power. But do you know what is happening at this time that is very sad? Because we don't know God. This is my point for this episode. Because we don't know God, we don't ascribe all power to him. That was what happened when the Lord was teaching the disciples the Lord's prayer. He said, all power belong to God forever and ever. So in this time of the coronavirus, this is what preachers and so-called Christians should say. That God has power over the virus he created. That is faith. This is what God expects of us at this time. If you are not able to say that all power belongs to God, you are not ascribing that part to him. That he can do everything. And that is a sin. Demons are causing people to do that. They want you to be afraid of them more than God. 
But I come to think of it and ask yourself, if God created demons, then who am I supposed to be afraid of? Who am I supposed to be afraid of? If I flip this question, what it means is that all those who are afraid of demons and this small virus don't know the God I'm preaching about. In what sense do they not know him? In the sense that they don't accept that all power belongs to him. If you know that all power belongs to God, you will never be afraid at this time. He created the coronavirus. So that is what I want you to understand. If God has power over all of these, then you don't have to be afraid. If God created all the demons and has power over them, then you have to understand that God has power over the virus. Have you felt the heat of the scorching sun? Have you felt the heat of the sun before? Have you felt that before? God spoke and the sun came into existence. He can push the sun in front and he can push it away from us. He can do everything. God is powerful. He is very, very powerful. You see, God has power to control everything he created. That is why it is very sad that human beings don't see that at this time. Why? It is because the church is just a social club. We go to sit there and we don't understand and don't believe what he can do. That is the problem. Look at how Jesus came to, to exhibit the power of God on this earth. And if we say we are Christians, it means we are taking after Jesus. Look at what he came to do here on earth. He demonstrated the power of God. In John chapter 11, where Lazarus had been dead. For four days, look at what happened in Israel. When you are dead, they wrap you with a white cloth. Wrap your whole body with white cloth. Put you in the grave and cover it with a stone. So if you read that scripture, you hear the Lord telling them, remove the stone. So listen, I'm doing the analysis again. A dead man, wrapped put in the ground. They remove only the stone. So he's standing just outside the tomb. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. Just, just these three words. Lazarus, come forth. By just saying that the dead man who was tied was standing in front of the grave. Hallelujah. That is power. That's what I'm talking about. That is power. So please, come to Action Power of Faith Ministries. And you will see that what I'm saying is the truth. We have power of God in us. We've got the power. So every demon is afraid of us. In this time of the coronavirus, don't let demons scare you by not accepting that all power belongs to Jesus. If you have ever read the Lord's Prayer, this is the time to ascribe the Lord the dearness of his nature and ability. That all power belongs to Jesus. I believe that. And if you can believe with me, you will say that with God, all things are possible. God bless you. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.